check sound hello yep i think maybe now we do have some sound uh if anybody is out there on the twitch or youtube yet please let me know uh, ideally in the discord chat i'll try to keep an eye on um the youtube chat as well if anybody is out there though already let me know if you can hear this i think i had the microphone set up incorrectly at first uh, but i believe we got it going now uh, let's see Tim, good now. Uh, Friday, I hear you, Paul. How's it going, Paul? Yep, thank you. Uh, appreciate the heads up there. How's it going, uh, Paul and Beata on the YouTube over there? Rick Olstein, uh, what can you use in lieu of a Raspberry Pi Zero W? Uh, good question. Let me uh, do like a quick introduction and stuff uh, before I dump, jump straight in and answer the question, though. Uh, and then I and then I will get to that. Uh, let me do a couple other. Uh, hellos though, uh, loud. I can tweak it down a bit. It's probably best if you can lower it on your end, maybe. I try to keep it high enough that you can definitely make me out. I'll tell you what, I'll tap it down gently, uh, but you may want to tap down the volume just a hair on your end as well. Uh, I try to keep it as high as I can for the microphone volume. That way people can always lower it as needed, but the, you know, the thing I don't want is for you to not be able to understand me in the stream there. Um, even if you do have it all the way on max. So, um, how's it going to Shipu and Seagrover? Thanks again for the heads up on the sound. Okay, so, um, hello everyone. My name is Tim, and I go by Foamy Guy on GitHub and Discord. Uh, this is the CircuitPython Deep Dive program. Um, so, we will be working on stuff in and around and related to CircuitPython. Uh, today, we are headed back to the roots of the Deep Dive podcast. We're going to be jumping into core stuff. I'm looking at one of the uh, latest things, actually, that Scott's been working on as well. So um, Scott's with us here in spirit. His work is with us uh, today as we jump into this new uh, web workflow uh, and kind of play around with it a bit. I did this a couple of weeks back. Um, I think last week I worked on something different, and then we're we're jumping back to it this week because I saw the PR uh, was put in, and I think is even merged now as well. So we'll check out where the web workflow has come since the last time we played with it. Um, taking a quick step back, though, for folks that might be new, again, my name is Tim, um, and we're going to be looking at CircuitPython-related things. Uh, if you don't know what that is, you can learn more at circuitpython.org. Uh, also would encourage you to join us on the Discord, which is linked down there, uh, adafru.it slash Discord. Uh, there's folks there that can also point you towards more resources that will get you up to speed in understanding what this is. Uh, but the quick version, uh, the high level, you know, 50,000 foot view version, uh, is that this is an implementation of Python that runs on these tiny computers called microcontrollers. Uh, there's a bunch of pictures of them in the background here. If we head over to the downloads page as well, uh, we'll find a bunch more pictures of different uh, shapes and sizes of these devices. So we're writing Python code. Um, it runs on these devices, and we can interact with um, you know other hardware. We can have like keyboard keys in this case, RGB LEDs, um, you know buzzers, beepers, buttons, sensors, like temperature sensors, accelerometers, um, you know Wi-Fi connections that can reach out to APIs on the internet, um, all kinds of stuff like this. We can write Python code that runs on these microcontrollers and kind of interacts with uh, other things in the world hooked up to these devices or other things, you know, hooked up to the same network uh, via like Wi-Fi or Bluetooth or something like that, uh, some sort of wireless connection. Um, so that's what we're doing. Um, CircuitPython is an open source project. The website for it is circuitpython.org. You can learn more there. Um, it is primarily funded by this company right here. This is their website, uh, adafruit.com. Um, they are a hardware and software company based out of New York uh, in the United States, and they are the ones who pay the development team that works on CircuitPython. Uh, some of the team is a uh, you know, full-time uh, job working on CircuitPython, um, and Adafruit pays them for that, and others uh, on the team, like myself, are part-time, um, and Adafruit pays us for time to work on the CircuitPython project uh, to create guides, to create documentation, to update, you know, code, all kinds of stuff like that. Um, Adafruit is paying the folks who are working on that stuff. So definitely want to say thank you to them. And then also just mention, you know, if you want to help support the project, one of the ways you can do that, of course, is just by purchasing hardware from Adafruit. They sell the microcontrollers, of course, like the ones we're running our Python code on. Um, they also sell all kinds of stuff that you can hook up to the microcontrollers, like your RGB lights and your buttons and your beepers and buzzers and sensors and um, you know, slides and knobs and everything you can think of. They sell all of that kind of stuff. You can hook it up uh, and then 
The other really, really cool thing, perhaps my favorite thing about the Adafruit website is actually the Adafruit Learn system, uh, which is where they have loads and loads. Uh, I think they're over a thousand at this point. I don't know if there's a quick, easy way to find the count, but I feel like I heard um, either Lady Ada or, or uh, PT reference pretty recently that it was, uh, I want to say like two or 3,000, honestly, guides that are in this um, learning system. And so these are like project guides, uh, as well as individual, you know, hardware guides that tell you different stuff you can do with your hardware, run you through step by step how to build a project, how to code it, how to get it running. Um, and so, you know, once you do have your hardware that you purchased, you can head to the learn system in order to find out what you can use that hardware for if you're looking for a ready-made project. But of course, uh, you know, you could always come up with your own thing as well, right? That's uh, at least half of the fun of playing with this stuff is also kind of inventing your own thing. Uh, so let's check in on the chats here. Uh, Rick Olstein, uh, loud, loud and clear. Yep, thank you. Uh, Beata, interesting uh, new Pi Pico W. Yeah, I saw the, uh, I think it was JP actually mentioned that the other day on JP's workshop. I hadn't heard that until then, and I actually forgot about that as well. I never did end up looking into those. I saw, though, the announcement for those new Picos, including a Pico W. Are there any, are there any, uh, any more details available for that stuff? So I didn't actually look into it yet. Does anybody know, um, are they, like, listed or... If RP2040, okay, Pico W, $6, that is, there are going to be a lot of these used. If the, if these are as available as the RP2040, uh, I mean, it's probably going to replace, like, the ESP32, I would think, right? As far as, like, just a very cheap IoT platform, essentially, right? It's got a bunch of IO pins. It's got Wi-Fi connectivity now, and it's six dollars. It's going to be tough to uh, is going to be tough to choose something else over that. Honestly, if you're not looking for like a built-in display or charging or something like that, you know, maybe you head towards a feather or something. If you do want some of those types of things, but as far as like just a microcontroller with a Wi-Fi connection at six bucks, that seems really really good to me. Um, it's like it's the same, is it the same core, RP2040, or did they also iterate on that? I not quite say. I won't read through this whole thing right now, I'm sure. Lots of other folks probably have already read this release. I think it came out yesterday or the day before. I don't know the exact timeline. I'm a little bit behind the time, though. I just hadn't looked into... Uh, looked into the devices yet, but this is awesome. The, the Wi-Fi one definitely has me super... Uh, super excited. A Pico with a Wi-Fi connection like that, I think that's going to be a really nice, helpful device. What's the $7 one? WH? Is it like high, high power or something? Does it just have a farther range or something like that? I don't actually know. WH? WH? BLE? Did the other one say BLE or...? Yeah, it does. Okay, I don't know what the difference is. We'll have to find a chart comparison or something. Or if anybody knows, uh, drop it in the chat. I'd appreciate that. Uh, but otherwise, those those look super cool. Uh, I don't know when the actual release we're looking at. I see both are listed as coming soon. So um, I don't know what the timeline is, but definitely looking forward to those. If it doesn't support monitoring. That's no bueno. Um, okay, so let me check the Discord as well. Uh, there's sound now. Sounds good on YouTube. Yep. Uh, so somebody asked about... Um, Oh, soldered headers, WH headers for the H. I'm with you. Okay, so an extra buck to for not only having the headers but soldering them on. Boy, that's a pretty good deal for the headers too. Um, both labor and the actual pins for a dollar more. Pretty good. Um, so yeah, somebody mentioned earlier who was that? Somebody says uh, Rick Olstein. What can I use in lieu of a Raspberry Pi Zero W? I think it depends a lot on what your real project is. Um, if you need a full Linux computer, right? Like if you're doing, you know, machine learning or something like that, where you're running um, some kind of machine learning model or, or something like that, then you probably need like a full, you know, single board computer. Um, but if you're doing something, you know, a little bit smaller in nature, like not necessarily as computationally, you know, um, requiring, you might be able to get by with 
a microcontroller that has Wi-Fi connection and, you know, the Pico W, if you can, I don't know what your timeline is like either, but, uh, or what their timeline is, I suppose. But if you could wait on something like that and it fits your project, that could make sense. Um, just uh, same capabilities. And if you need full same capabilities of a Zero W, um, then you're probably looking at some other kind of single board computer. Um, you know, maybe like if you just need a Raspberry Pi, you know, maybe you get by with like a 3B or something. If you can't find a zero, maybe you could find uh, one of the bigger ones. I assume the reason why you're wanting to have a replacement for the zero W is that you can't get them or something like that. So uh, maybe one of the bigger ones might be available. Um, or maybe one of the other single board computers. I can see like wanting to stick with Raspberry Pi though. It's definitely kind of the leader in that sort of single board computer era area um so i'm gonna i think we can just pull main because i'm pretty sure this is now updated in the repo right uh, i swear i haven't checked today but i thought i saw yesterday or maybe it was early this morning i think i saw this one got merged was that oh there was wi-fi wi-fi workflow okay this is adding links to it though I think it's web workflow. Yeah. It is merged now. We can go back to main. I probably should have updated before I got here. Sometimes it does take me a minute to update. Sorry if that's the case. On Raspberry and capabilities. Yeah, I'd probably, like, if if you're having trouble finding the Zero W, if it were me, I'd probably, like, try to keep an eye out for one of the bigger Pies as well. Like, if you can snag a 3B+, plus, one of the older ones that still has Wi-Fi and still, you know, is comparable CPU and RAM and everything, uh, maybe snag one of those. Or if you get a chance on a 4, um, do something like that and just kind of grab the first one you get and plan on, like, a bigger, you know, case or something for it. Does Adafruit make one a replacement for the Zero W? Uh, not exactly, really. No, the boards that Adafruit makes tend tend to be more microcontrollers rather than single board computers. Um, so, like, they have things that are maybe more analogous to the Raspberry Pi Pico. You know, they have Adafruit branded boards that are similar to the Pico in some ways. They use the same main chip, um, but they don't necessarily have something that's like the same as a Raspberry Pi, a full proper Raspberry Pi with Linux. Um, too much money? Um, I don't know. I mean, I think it's, like, uh, probably just a much more difficult thing to design and manufacture and sell, right? It probably just has more, more components, more complexity, all kinds of stuff. Uh, they actually have a different PCB without the castellations for the header version. Oh, really? So it's, uh, like, square cut on the edges instead of the castellations? How's it going, Ask Patrick? Uh, Wi-Fi model, uh, Wi-Fi modules API is apparently under NDA. Oh no, for the Raspberry Pi Pico. That's a bummer. I mean, they had precedent for that too, though, right? The original ones, I think, still even to this day, some of the like graphics stuff is sort of black blobby, isn't it? You can't necessarily see the source of some of it. It's just kind of like binary, call it, and it draws what you want instead of uh, understanding more. I think some of the originals were like that. I haven't looked into it too much lately, but. I mean, it's it's tough though too, because I I understand their perspective too. If it's if they can really do all of that for six dollars, like that's kind of dropping the price point on that device. I think on the market, so you also don't necessarily want you know ESP or any other companies to be able to replicate it right away just by duplicating. I mean, maybe you do. I don't know. I I guess in my my point of view, you would, but I'm not them, and I don't have the same sort of incentives and need to sell the same kind of hardware and stuff, right? Like, all of Adafruit's hardware is open source because it's kind of, like, helpful when people make other variations of it. Um, I don't know, Raspberry Pi, though, they're kind of inside of the chip manufacturer, right? Who is it? Um, Broadcom? Is that, are they still kind of tucked inside of Broadcom somewhere? So they're, like, kind of part of a much larger system. Yeah, for sure. Uh, hopefully we're going to be up to date here pretty quick. This sometimes take me a minute. While that's running, though, let's uh, 
Let's take a look back at the PR as well. I don't know. It's been a little while since I messed with it. So if uh, folks that watched a couple weeks back, I think the place where we left off was um, we were, I had my own uh, edit page, which was not uh, not combined in yet with the work that Tano's done, um, Scott, uh, but it does like it, it used the API that Scott was implementing, the puts um, to update the files. And so I think a lot of work has been done on the API. I think there's also like delete now and there's list file directories, all kinds of stuff. I think there's also this new markdown file which we could theoretically open. Um, docs workflows, I don't know if it will be there yet, I guess, because we are maybe not, our pull is not complete. Yeah. Yeah, I don't have a docs workflows yet, so we got to wait on our pull, unfortunately. Uh, Charles Burniford, how's it going? Thanks for tuning in. Let's see. PC, IV, GPU, binary blob, because of the rules set forth, yeah, by Broadcom. That's what I was thinking. Okay, 109 files. There we are. 81 commits, so we're finally up to date here. We then should have workflows. Maybe we need to refresh. Hmm, docs workflows? It moved after that, or main, or it's still indexing, I guess. Maybe we weren't quite done yet. Oh, it's not a directory. Yeah. Workflows. I think this is a new file. USB is the original workflow with the drive, serial. I didn't know that. I don't know much about the Arduino workflow. BLE. I still need to play with BLE. The BLE workflow, I mean. Although I do kind of like the Wi-Fi one better, truthfully, now that it exists. I think Wi-Fi is a little less finicky than, than uh, Bluetooth, personally. And here's our new stuff, web workflow. Okay, so let's just get the, loaded, the, the latest version built and running on my device, which is a um, Feather TFT, uh, ESP32-S2. Verify information didn't look at the available docs. Yeah, well, and I mean, the other thing is, too, like, it's not even, I don't know, are, are they actually for sale yet? Like, there is some possibility that it's, like, still closed off, and then maybe once they release it, or maybe once they release the next version, it may still open up at some point. Um, but I mean, Raspberry Pi, even if they do keep it closed source, you know, ideally, right? I think all of us would probably like it if it was open source, but also you have to admit, like, Raspberry Pi certainly has done a lot for open source hardware and software. Um, right? Even if they do keep some of their stuff closed, you know, obviously as an entity, they have still done a lot of good in that direction. So uh, is it, I think, is it, uh, we're going to have to go, or do we want to run it? No, I think we want to source it. Dot, uh, dot slash ESP IDF export, is that right? Show, is that? I think that's right. They say in the news, network stack is built around IWIP, uses libcyw43 from Damien George of MicroPython to communicate with the wireless chip by default. libcy43 is licensed for non-commercial use, but PicoW users, anyone else who builds their product around that, benefit from a free commercial use license. Oh, interesting. It's kind of like it uses a thing that would be non-commercial, but they s created a separate license for it, kind of as part of this effort to be uh, to be allowed for commercial. Yeah, I would say, I mean, that would be kind of a deal breaker. If it's not allowed in 
commercial usage, that definitely does cut down the number of folks that would want to buy one um, of that device. But the other thing is also, right, like you could still buy RP2040s as a chip and build your own thing if you needed. For me, it's not about how much they're doing. I agree that community-wise they're great. It's about future-proofing my own projects. Yeah, that's definitely a good point. If it's open source, it makes it easy for you to like maintain it for years to come if, if certain components stop working or stop working together with other components. Uh, or stop getting supported by the entity that created them can still be picked up by the community. That's definitely a good point. Um, so we've got our export on. We should be able to build, I think. Um, so let's go make sure we get S2. I've been tricking myself sometimes. I accidentally make builds for the S3. Um, I actually have some S3s on order now as well. I did get a back in stock notification for SP32 S3 TFTs this week. I got some of those coming. I think they're coming. Did they come? Did they make it yet? I don't think they did. I should check on the tracking actually. I'm not sure. It might not be till next week though, I guess, because of the holiday. Uh, make uh, board, shouty board, board, paste it, dash, what was it? Um, J4? J4? Disagree on how much hardware, um, how much open source and open hardware is or has been doing. I mean, that's fair. Everybody's entitled to their opinion. I don't, I don't have any problem with that. Like, I think from my perspective, I feel like they certainly have done a lot, a lot more than some, some companies certainly. But definitely, like, they can always do better. I think, you know, everybody could always do better, I think. Everybody could always have more open source. Let's go to bootloader as well over here. So... Didn't do a clean. Usually it's pretty quick. I was getting builds like 15, 20 seconds, but I guess it probably had to remake something that was that is part of it. Probably didn't get to reuse everything. I guess that's probably why it's taking a no longer or so. Anything in particular foundation or the commercial part? For Raspberry Pi, like the stuff that they have open sourced? I mean, Raspbian OS? Uh, all the utilities that you, know, you can install and use on the Raspberry Pi. And even things like the configuration tool have gotten a lot better over the years. Yeah, that's definitely true. Humans have their fair share of, of, uh, of flaws. That's definitely true. So let's... Okay, so I have my feather is in bootloader mode now. Uh, I have this cute little uh, seal here as well. Hello, everybody say hi to seal. It's very big in this camera. It's actually pretty small, but... Zoomed in very far, so we're gonna go CP the firmware that we just made. Firmware to um, media. Let's see, to be feather boot, feather boot, feather stew. I mean, also the whole, like, PO system, right? Isn't the PO, like, I don't know too much about it personally, but isn't that kind of like a new idea for microcontrollers, the way that they exposed the uh, their PO, like, cores, or what do they call them? I don't think they call them cores, but... Um, I don't know, I still have yet to use them too much, but I think that was, like, a new thing that I imagine, like, other people will probably pick up at this point, right? Because it's very effective at being able to write a portion of your code super low level. Um, that's like an example of a thing more recently that they have kind of created and shared with the world. I don't know to what extent, I guess it's all open source. Maybe it's, maybe that's more closed source than I'm aware of, but one thing that comes to mind. So let's check out the IP 1.12 and see what we see here. So we have a web welcome page now. Awesome. 
of a tiny little blinker. Favicon. Oh, it's up, it's up here too, so that's a nice touch. File browser. So we were here before. So I think I had the password, if I recall right, I did this? Yeah. I have deletes. There's the add file thing. I'm not sure what some of these don't render in my browser, at least. I think there's a couple of different ones there. If you go to this, it does go directly to that. So it looks like we don't have the pencil or the uh, edit stuff anymore. So we'll maybe put some of that stuff back. Page is looking nice though, definitely compared to the last time I seen it. Like I don't, I don't think all of this stuff was listed out, and I feel like the, I feel like the layout is cleaner, but I don't quite remember. Hopefully, I don't think it was. It felt like more of a list before, and now it feels a little more like a table. So I don't think there is any like, like this. Is there? That's what we worked on. Okay, so it gave me to a page, but I think that's like, I'll just return that for anything, yeah. Probably redirect back to index, maybe, if you request one that it doesn't know about. This is cool, it tells you the version and stuff, too. Board. Oh, wow, look at that, link back to the board, that's nice. You can download the firmware right there. You know, it's inter interesting is it could have a link to the latest firmware just on this page. I don't know if we really want it to necessarily, but like... I tried this before, I thought, and I don't think I could get it to working, but now I think... It's also, there's only a single socket or whatever, is that right? Because if I close this, does this... No. Yeah, I'd have to do something else on my network for this one to work, maybe. Oh, I should have done this first. Open first and then close. And then it doesn't find any others because I don't have any others turned on right now. I don't uh, uh, have a... I mean, actually, I guess I have another Feather TFT. Or I could use a mag tag. State machines and PO pins. Uh, let's see. ESP32 and 8266 also have closed source blobs around the Wi-Fi. Raspbian, they're forced to respect Debian and individual license, so they're more or less forced. I, I mean, they're forced because they chose to go with Debian, but, like, they could have chosen not to go with Debian, right? Like, they could have chosen a different thing and then kept it all closed source. So, like, yeah, they're kind of forced, but they still made the choice to get themselves to be kind of forced. Um, and I think that's, like, a commendable choice. Like, there are companies that would make a device and just build their own OS instead or not base it off of... Debian directly, but find some other derivative that has a different license, or find something that's not a derivative directly of Debian or something. I think, like, once they chose Debian, of course they have to respect the license of it, but they, they had the choice of the OSs, and they chose to start with that one. Or you've set Wi-Fi. I guess this page must be before you... Do the, well, yeah, yeah, it must be before the password because we clicked here and then we got the password, or not here, but it was uh, it was this one, and then we got the password prompt. Oh wait, storage. Oh, for details. I wonder if this behavior changed. Because this page talks about disabling it in BootPy. Last time I was messing with this, though, I was, uh, I was not disabling it in BootPy. I was just doing this. Eject there. Yeah, that went away. I wonder if we should modify that page to say... Wait a minute. If you eject the USB storage, can your Python code write files? Like if I go to the REPL right now, can I just write files? Uh, to you? Um, I guess I don't need to import anything, do I? F equals open 
press new file. Press. No. Weird. So there's actually kind of like a in-between state. The web workflow notices that I ejected and it doesn't show me that warning anymore and it lets me edit the files, at least it did last time I messed with it. I assume it's still the same. But ejecting it does not allow it to write from the actual circuit Python code. Yeah. Yeah, remount it if I want it to work that way. I just, I was thinking maybe we would have a chance at it because this one is allowed to edit files. Like, if I put my edit page back in here, I'll be able to write files, is, is my understanding, uh, even without changing my boot pie. Like, right now, I, well, I do have a boot pie, but it's, or no, this is not on my device, my actual device. Let's close this also. I don't think I do have the boot pie on the actual device. Let's reload here. Oh, well, of course I disconnected my, uh, I, I ejected the drive. You can't see it. Let's double check boot pie. I'll, re I'll reset. Um, it's like there's a third state in there though, because the web workflow can write files when it's just ejected, but you haven't modified boot pie. At least that's how it was last time I used it. Yeah, I have no boot pie right now on the on the actual device. I got one on my PC inside this workspace, but not the actual device. Um, and then, so let's try, well, editing, I guess, is going to be hard. I think there's an add file. Maybe we could try with that. That'll tell us that we can edit. So let's do eject it again. Problem is you can connect USB without restarting. I don't think it would work from web workflow. It did um, last week, or well, about two weeks ago, I guess. A week and a half ago is the last time I did it. Uh, but it was back then. I didn't have the boot pie, and I was able to edit files. You power the device, not from your computer, to make sure it's not mounted like a phone charger. I could do that. Um, we'll try this, like create directory. So this, I mean, like this would only work if I had writeability, right? Um, test new dir. Okay, I don't know if it, uh, I don't know if it like returns or does anything. Doesn't seem to do anything. Oh, we don't have a connection anymore? Anything on the screen? Are we still on 12? Oh no, our, our key changed. Hm. There we go. Let's open this the first time now. Okay. So it sent the put for the new directory, return back success created. It did not update this, I don't think, although it. Well, it did make a new git? Seems like it would have updated, huh? It cleared this too, actually. Oh, no, it is there. Duh, I'm just blind. So yeah, it, it created this directory. Um, I am ejected. I still have it ejected, but I don't have boot pie at all, so it's not remounting. If I just... If I restart right now, it'll reconnect USB storage and I'll be able to edit files right away from USB storage. Sounds like a bug. Um, it does sound counter to the old expectation. I'll give you that. It'd be cool if it is not a bug. It'd be cool if it's intended. So I'll choose to believe maybe it's a hopefully a new feature. I don't know, I mean, on the same token though, I don't know what makes the web workflow different than the Python. Like theoretically, I would think 
I mean, since this is enough for the web workflow, I wonder if there's any future where if you eject like I did, I wonder if we could then have CircuitPython write without BootPy. That'd be pretty cool. Um, and it seems possible for the web workflow at least. And then there's, there's upload as well. So we could upload a new file. Um, we go like test new file dot text. Hello, deep dive. Save that, and then we can load this up. And then either browse, or probably we can like plunk it onto here, maybe? Nope, just kidding. File selected. Try one more time. Nope. Uh, where is this folder actually? I don't know. Device workspace? Where are you? Repos, CircuitPython. Okay. I'm going to refresh. Let's make sure we at least have the page before I get to like go find it and then find out I just didn't, my page was not even active anymore. Changed IPs again or something. Device workspace. Test new file. Upload. Test, test new file text. There it is. Yeah, and there's our content for it. Can you create a directory while the USB is mounted? No, I don't think so. Uh, if the USB is mounted, then it gives me this warning. So if I go uh, back to here and I reset, Reset once, which will have the effect of remounting the USB because this will reboot into default default mode or whatever, right? So it'll connect. Uh, it'll take it a second. There it is. And now if I load this page at this point, or let me go back. I don't know if it matters if you go to this one first or what, but back here. And then it has this message. USB is using the storage, only allowing reads. So I, I think the idea is there. USB is using the storage, therefore, Web workflow is only allowing reads. See this page for more details. Um, and so then at this point, I should I don't believe that I can create a directory. In fact, yeah, it won't even let me type into here. Even if I cheated and used like curl or something though, um, there's an error code that it returns. I think 409 or so, something. We saw it when we were working on the edit page a couple weeks back. Um, I don't, not specifically creating directories, but the error that happens when you save while this is not ready, basically, while you're mounted. I thought file access, even from C, done correctly, would depend on the drive is mounted, uh, but maybe Web Workflow does that on its own or bypasses. Yeah, that's my best guess as well. I haven't looked into the really nitty-gritty of how, how it works or why it's able to do that, but it seems like there is some sort of exception made for web workflow, at least as of the behavior right now. Now, it is definitely still a valid question, like, is that intended or not? Uh, we'll have to definitely talk to Scott to see if that's intentional. I guess BLE workflow has the same constraints. It's very hard uh, to have two users use the same file system. Need to be explicit, yeah, definitely. Uh, otherwise, you get conflicts, and then it's no good. You need version control, basically. Um... Okay, so what do we, do we want to try to put the edit page back? I don't know, Scott took the pencils off of here. I don't know if that means that it's not necessarily intended to have an edit page. I guess we could put it back and always make a PR and get feedback that way. Um, yeah, let's try that. Um, start with, I'll just add links back, I think, and see if we can go from there. So I do think this code is Quite a bit different than the last time I saw it. It's been refactored quite a bit. We'll see what, uh, oh, supervisor. Workflow. Is it, oh, it's in, it's shared. Web workflow, web workflow.
Check for authenticated. We are authenticated. We're coming down to here. Directory. So this is because FS does multiple duty. Like FS with nothing at the end gives you this page, but FS with a file at the end gives you the raw file. So what we need is the FS root directory, reply directory. That's JSON though. There's a put get. Here we go. Only with a file. Reply missing. Reply with file. But we would want not the file. The uh, full list of them there. How does that work now? Does it work differently? This making an additional request or directory JS. Refresh list. Looks like directory.js has got some stuff for us. Where is directory.js though? The under tools? Supervisor shared web workflow static. Icon should be fixed using HTML entities and setting inner HTML instead of text content. Like this one here? I mean, I assume they're not broken for Scott. I don't actually know, though. Kind of assumed it was something weird with my browser. You'll PR it? I'll make a build like that. Let's work on this as well, though. So it's making a delete button. It's not, where does it add the delete button though? Okay, it's not making a new one, it's looking it up. Clone.query selector. So it came from the clone. We actually would, if we wanted to add an edit, we would need to. We would need to put a link into the clone. What is this template content? Template document query selector row. Where'd that come from? Not in this file. Is there HTML supervisor? Shared workflow static. Directory. Oh, that's a lot of TDs. Blue row. Just because they're all blank, I see, right? Give them IDs, maybe. Just be warning. If we made another TD here with an A tag, it 
edit. I think that means we get an edit link. Of course, it doesn't it's, it doesn't go anywhere right now, but I think that means we should get an edit link at least on each one. Now the icons are bad. I assume they're supposed to be emojis. I don't know what he intended to do there. I yeah, I feel like I saw some more on his when he showed it on deep on um. Show and tell last. I feel like I saw more on his screen share than I do on mine here. So I do think there's maybe something that's different between our browsers or something that's causing some difference. But I have no idea what that could be. But also that was like, that was also even probably like three or four weeks ago. I think that was even further back. Um, oh no, that was about the same, same time frame because I went on show and tell and showed the edit page that I had so far, yeah. That was, I think that was about the, about the same one. That's our bad bot, you're insane. Oh, did it delete something from you? Didn't catch it. Nice. Yeah. Okay. So this one probably shouldn't have hit it, but that's all right. In fact, I guess there's going to be, there's probably more that shouldn't like, I mean, directories probably don't need to have edit either. So yeah, it'll, we'll want to make logic for that probably. Uh, but we got our, got our link there. That's a good start. So to go linking to, we're going to say Oh, we actually will we'll need to set it truthfully in JavaScript code. Because before we were doing something like slash edit slash and then hashtag and the file name. That's how we had it set up. So this link would need to go to slash edit slash hashtag file name. There is actually this one of these links gets filled in with the tie with the file name. I guess we could borrow from that. Oh yeah, these ones don't show in my editor either. Icon, so we did change that. Did it make any difference? The ones that are arrows do still work. It's interesting. That didn't break anything, but it does still have quite a few that don't show. One button circuit from the device homepage would be a huge labor saver. Yeah, agreed. It's tough though, I'm, I'm not sure about cores, if it can download the library. If it could download it, and then it could make the put request to like put it on the, put it on the device, but I don't know if it can actually download it. It would be awesome though on the homepage if there was like, search for a library, click install, and it installs it for you. Try with this. Where does this bit go? Thanks, JS. Is this the whole file or? No. Oop, that's not what we want. Did it overwrite this var icon up here? Need some let icons too. This is uh, older JavaScript style.
Oh yeah, here's so we do run into trouble here because it's looking it up by a tag. Kind of need like, you know, I guess we don't need it. We could go by index, but it's kind of the code's nicer if these have classes, right? So this can be edit link, and this can basically go. Well, it comes after the delete button, at least that's where it's at now. We can go var edit link equals clone dot query selector dot edit link edit link use let dot href equals this won't be file path but it will be it does put the um tag there that slash file path Rural base. Rural base. Put out location. The URL. Edit. F dot name and look it up, then set the href. Okay. It says uh, your icons code, and then it has hopefully populating the edit links with slash edit. Slash hashtag file name. So then if we get that, and then we put back the edit, what I'll call a view, because uh, I'm used to writing web framework code, the edit view, then uh, I think we'll be able to use our edit page. Got a copy. Try refreshing this one. Okay. Ooh, yeah, there you go. Got uh, folders now and um, down arrows and file pages. Nice. Yeah, that one seems good to me if you want to PR that. I don't know. Again, I, it's possible he's got something else on his end that's making them show for him. Um, not actually sure. Or it's possible he just slipped it in and hasn't gotten around to troubleshooting it yet. It's broken on his and his as well. Nice, yeah, so these do have edit slash and then hashtag file name. So like codepy slash edit slash hashtag codepy. Pretty sure that's exactly what we had before when we implemented this. Now the tricky bit will be Getting my code back. Hmm. 
this in a different instance or I see. Okay. I guess I did push this though, so maybe we could check it out on this side and then be able to compare it in the same one, hopefully. Maybe we need to fetch. There we go, CP web server, foamy guy. Now we have changes. I guess really we want to compare. So I had this reply with edit page. But it seems like these don't necessarily... I guess they do still exist. Yeah. Yeah, okay. That was the last one. Oh, nope, there is more. Reply static still. This was a big one. Where's, like, reply... I guess this is, this is what we want to do, is we want to move our HTML into here. Because remember, also, last time I worked on this, I was, um, I was like, compiling my HTML uh, into Minify and then copying it into C code. But now it can have an HTML file here. How does it actually serve these, though? Nothing ever has h welcome.html. Oh, reply static? It's like... Static. Um, actually, no, we, we didn't have a different project. This was just in here. Boy, I don't know which one I was working on last. I mean, I guess one of these would be build minified. Okay, build minified. Use smaller.min. Theoretically, this was the one I was working with. So then if we can return that page with reply static, I think it should work. We will need to figure out how do we add in our other URL, we right? Whoa.
Bye. Okay. It's basically really only handles two right now, slash FS and slash CP. Um, sorry, let me catch up on the chat here. Uh, good night. Uh, Deshipu, thanks for hanging out for a bit. See you around. Uh, running out of USB-C cables. Yeah, I bought some new USB-C cables, uh, recently. I'm late. Uh, really late. Uh, you never have a late, right? It's all on the VOD. You can watch it. Web workflow is gonna change everything. Yeah, I agree. I think it's gonna make a lot of stuff, um, really, really cool. Uh, to be able to do stuff without, like, client software, really. Um, even a text editor, right? Browser is very, very ubiquitous, and we can kind of control the, the editor in there, so I think it's, it's got a lot of neat possibilities. Uh, Adafruit HTTP server, I was just playing with there. There's three different kinds of routes, static, local, and file. Which board? This is the uh, Feather TFT, ESP32-S2 uh, Feather TFT is the device I'm using to write this to. If I understand correctly, it supports all devices that run on the Espresso port, um, but I'm not 100% sure. This is the only one I've used. Got very confused uh, by the timestamps in the chat window in the live stream. Wait, why is my clock wrong? Oh yeah, <laughs> different time zone. This is web, uh, Webflow local server for editing code, uh, still in alpha. Yeah, definitely, very, very, very alpha at this point. Um, it is merged now into main, so it's a little bit less alpha than it was when we played with it, you know, a week and a half or so ago, but still very, very, very alpha. So you can edit the code for your board from, yeah, Adafruit IO or local server, yeah, or eventually the page that it serves itself, hopefully. Isn't it more about serving HTML handle response, etc.? This code, I mean, it is, yeah, it's doing that because it's basically, it is a web server, uh, essentially, like CircuitPython core is running a web server that's returning these pages. Yep, thanks for the link there, Ask Patrick. That's the uh, exact device. Do you work on Pico W Wi-Fi support within CircuitPy? I personally probably will not, because that's probably out of my depth. Um, I suspect I would not be very good at being able to do that, because I don't have a lot of experience working with those like vendor hardware SDKs and like implementing new things into CircuitPython. I'm not quite that good at C code yet, basically. Um, so I personally probably will not. I suspect at some point that the Pico W will have CircuitPython support, and I suspect at some point it will also have uh, the CircuitPython that runs on it will have support for using the Wi Fi. I don't know that for a fact. It's not my call, so you, know, you can't hold me to it. Don't get disappointed if it ends up that I'm wrong, but. My guess is that is the case, is at some point it will support that, but I don't know when um, or who exactly will work on it for certain. Need to get one of those. Uh, just bought two Pico W's. Now I gotta wait for libs because uh, I'm too small brain to make it myself. Um, the S3 is out and it has Bluetooth, uh, but out of stock, very in demand. Can still get the S2. Yeah. The S3 as well is a newer Circuit Python port. I don't think it supports all the same stuff yet for the S3. But I'm also not sure. I haven't played with any S3s yet. I got some coming. Um, so really, I think I want the edit because I used to, in here we had code like checking on this. What? What? There we go. And so our old code was yeah, checking authenticated, which we should still do. Mm. 
Then if it was authenticated, we said reply with edit page. This is now going to be reply static. Socket request edit HTML, but we need to create that. Where did this come from? Static file. Edit HTML. Where did this come from still though? Is it? Hmm. Maybe these are file name. Maybe this needs to actually be literally edit. It's taking like file name dot file extension somehow. Doesn't seem like it has any more of these anywhere. Give it a try. Okay. So we can do reply for Bowden. Doesn't exist. Maybe we got the wrong name. I'll try to get it. I'll try to get it building. Uh, and at least then. We're at least waiting on more than just me. We're waiting on the build as well. Conflict, I think, is the USB error. We do still have reply forbidden. Socket? Does it take more now? Yeah, I think it takes socket and request. Probably, I guess, this one too. Okay, BRB. Nope, just kidding. Five. Ah. Okay. Okay, we did not succeed. I don't have any red though, that's interesting. Undefined reference, edit HTML, hmm. How do those things get defined? catch up. Most people don't need to worry if they can't get their hands on the Pico W for now. Yeah, it'll be a, a bit, I think, before it has CircuitPython. I mean, that's a total guess. I haven't heard anything about it, but generally new devices take a minute to get spun up. The web workflow will just require Wi-Fi, right? Seems obvious. Uh, but yeah, I believe so. Whereas we used to only support USB OTG. Uh, I mean, we have BLE support on some of them, ask Patrick, like on the NRF52840s, um, you can use BLE workflow uh, from a phone and you don't need an OTG cable. Um, but yeah, without BLE, 
your option for editing from a phone was USB OTG cable. Um, and when we have web workflow, your option will then be either web workflow or BLE if you have it, or the OTG cable if you don't have any of those. Yeah. Wi-Fi module, then instead save it for USB. Point would be to set up a server on the board. Then you could basically remote to it and edit code on it from anywhere. The downside is that if you mess up your script, lose your Wi-Fi connection, unsure how to recover. Yeah, well, if you're if it's still a Circuit Python device, it'll still do the USB workflow as well. So like you can always still just plug it in if your Wi-Fi connection gets broken. Something somehow this thing does it right. File name. I don't get what this is doing. That's not taking me to... Hmm. That doesn't even exist in here. Why do you tell me that exists when it doesn't exist? These are getting replaced somehow. This search is finding... Length and content type. Somehow this search is finding these actually being filled in. File name. But my edit HTML is still broken. Wi-Fi connection in a poor driving scenario. More thing to worry about is finding stuff in the walls. Undefined reference to... Does it need to be an H also? Maybe they're in... But I searched and didn't... Oh. So weird because it seems like this would exist already, but there's no other references to it. This is the first one in the file. And the other one is down here where it calls reply static. How does it create this though?
I don't know. I'm at a bit of a loss here. Right file. Scott's still around for the day? Probably not for too long, if so, I guess. Maybe I'll ask in CircuitPython dev, see if Scott or Dan or anybody knows can point me. Can I get a link to this? Isn't it supposed to let me link to this? That's good.
531. Oh, uh, it's one of the. Oh, let me catch up here. Native for the HTTP server, the actual web page can be served through the Py script and embedded in JavaScript. Python and F string. That's true. Yep. If you do it from the CircuitPython layer instead of inside the core, I think is what uh, you're referencing. And yeah, it can work that way as well. Where it exists, Raspberry Arduino, making it more accessible to anyone. I mean, that's normal. Still, a thousand more useful non illegal stuff. Yeah. It's one of the three methods. 531 issues on the repo. Yeah, I don't get how he includes the files either. I think there is a macro to insert the content of a file as a string, but I don't see it anywhere. Or I have it completely wrong. Yeah, something it certainly does. It feels like something is uh, something else is orchestrating these to get slipped in somehow. I'm surprised that I'm not finding like any references that point us anywhere closer when I search for stuff like this. It is, it's probably a clue that these ones show up, these underscore content type and underscore length. Even though they show up, they point me to this line, which has no underscore length or content type, but this bit here seems like it's adding file name to underscore content length or content type, and then this one is like underscore length. Ah, here we go. Thank you, Scott. Copy link. Twenty-nine. Oh, but that's where I was. Hmm. Is it a ordering problem? This below. I think that's no. It was nine seventy six. That's eight twenty nine. Does it tell me the which like line maybe so we could see are we failing when we try to basically are we failing here or are we failing down when it gets used? It's used on 984. Gets declared on 828. Well, this happens to it. I don't know if this is declaring it. This one actually, it has an undefined to the one with the underscore length. Content type. Those like, those start failing right there. This is like inside of expressive tools. Workflow.o. Literal reply, undefined reference. Firmware.elf. 
Uh, are we getting a link error now? Static file declares it. That's a link error. Sorry. Did you add edit? I, I did? I think so. Uh, into here I did. Is it, I mean, it wouldn't need to be in the repo, would it? I think that would make a difference, but we could try adding it. In web workflow static. So this one's a link error. How do, do I know it's a link error because it's doesn't have all the red stuff like some of the other errors did? Or just due to the section that it got to when it's building? Sorry, that might be a silly question, but I'm not sure quite how to tell the different um, ones of those apart yet. Document parser. Oh, we need to run this probably. Do we need to run this? Be the right place. Or does this get run as part of the build? Auto-generated. Web workflow static. Undefined reference is a link error, okay. Long arguments, Let's see file. And there's an L, is it LD or capital ID maybe? It's probably capital ID in the line. I guess it is probably L, I guess, for linker then. Okay, yeah, this one does look like lowercase L. Okay, LD. Make clean? We can do make clean, definitely. file should pick it up yeah actually i didn't even do a clean today honestly i did, did i maybe we did we maybe we did a clean the first time now i don't remember i don't think so probably should have started with that truthfully yeah we had a long build on the first one but i don't think i actually did specifically a clean Got my attention because usually I get a longer build after I do a clean, but I think I didn't actually back on it. I did. I don't know. I have to watch the watch the tape. Doesn't matter too much really though. Um, that's a good question, asked Patrick. My understanding is it's just the RM RMRF on that directory but that that directory holds a bunch of stuff that gets used if it's not deleted. A bunch of cached stuff that it will reuse next time if it can. But I could definitely be wrong too. Anything more? No. Nice. Oh, I see. Advisor web workflow static. And then this is autogen, I see. Pretty nifty. Nice. Okay, this did build. Yeah, I should have done it clean. Thank you for the help. Definitely super duper appreciate it. Uh, and all the work, this is awesome. It's much further along than last time I played with this. It seems like you've definitely been busy. Let's get back to, well, we need to copy, copy that. Chat's back here. This is running. This is here. 19. 
Trash storage, so I will un... Oh, uh, Scott, if you... Nice, WebSockets will be awesome to have REPL through here. Um, we had this question earlier. Is it intended that you should be allowed to use web workflow with only, like, ejecting the storage like this? Like, I'm just ejecting it from the PC side, and then if I refresh, this goes away? And then my assumption is that because that goes away, like I'm now meant to be allowed to edit files. Like I was able to upload a file with this and I was able to create a new directory with this thing down here. Or is the intention that you should actually have to have bootpy and you should actually have to do that storage remount, which is what the link that was here in the warning was pointing to like the storage page. We weren't sure what, if, if it was, because it seems to be that just the eject is enough, but we weren't sure if that was actually intentional or not. Nice, all of that actually worked. I'm actually kind of surprised that the rest of this all worked. So now we have edit. It is from our static page, which is awesome, because this is super sweet. We don't have to minify it anymore. We could also eventually take all the JavaScript and put it into a file either in here or in, uh, oh, not all OSs can eject like that. Okay, see, I have special ejection next. I guess there isn't, well, there's, what is there on, when, there's like, right click, it, there, there is something, disconnect or disconnect safely or something. Unplug safely, I forget what it's called. It's been so long since I've used Windows at this point with actual like thumb drives and stuff. And it would have been Windows 7 the last time I did it. Um Yeah, it does for what it's worth, it does seem to work this way. For me at least. I can uh I can eject it in my OS and then I am able to edit this, I think. Although I haven't tested this page since we just got it working. Let's see if we do. Hello Deep Dive. Nice, 204, yeah, I think that's successful. Refresh. Yeah. Sweet, we're able to edit. Um, okay, so now thinking back to the last time, this gets us back to basically where we were. The last time I played with this though, we were, I think I hit a, I hit a ceiling where I could not keep adding fancy stuff to this, which of course we may not ultimately want all the fancy stuff. I was kind of just playing with a lot of it. Um, but it would be interesting to go back and see if we can now do it, if any of this has changed anything. What's the difference between my edit new and my edit new smaller? Where's compare with? Still getting used to new. Um, still getting used to this newer pie charm. Here with select file to compare. Okay, so we don't, basically it ignores what we have open. That's why we right-click the file we want to compare one of them, and then we choose the other one in here. Okay, I had Control S for saving. I had overriding control R. I did that for find replace. Control R, yeah. Although this version, oh no, that's, that's, I did F right there actually. But replace would have popped up the same thing. Ah, these things. I think I'll work on circuit feature this week, uh, weekend, try to get the basics to work. I might go to show and tell. Oh, that'd be awesome. 
Yeah, Circup would be super cool. I also liked, I saw the uh, the welcome page, which is back here. Oh, maybe we're on one of the weird states where... I do have weird stuff. Sometimes my browser likes to just randomly decide that we're really trying to use HTTPS instead. One time I did have this change. Maybe it doesn't do CP directly? I guess, yeah, does it not do CP directly? Or is it because I put the slash? Maybe it doesn't want that? No, I don't know. Hmm. No, it doesn't seem like it answers CP. Yeah, in here or in this page, though, I guess pro probably this one makes the most sense. A circup style, like, to the library, install it, that'd be super duper cool. Is there, do you know if there's like something you have to set up on your network or on your PC or something for these uh, .local ones? I've noticed I am not able to see those. But I didn't know if I needed to like do something in my, like in my router or just on my PC or anything like that. Yeah. Started working on a different page, and then implemented cores. Orange? Orange is better than red, I guess. Uh, okay, live, back to fair. I, we probably cut out. I assume we probably cut out right there. Uh, you might have to refresh the page. Unfortunately, I guess the people who might need to refresh the page probably can't hear me, but... I don't know. Twitch, YouTube, we might have, yeah, lost YouTube. Uh, it, it seemed like it came back quickly enough that it should auto redo on the same page or whatever. It shouldn't like start a new uh, thing, but yeah, we should be should be back hopefully. And Wi-Fi could block multicast packets uh, with that block bonjour. Good question. Yeah, I don't know. I have I can tell you my router basically is just the stock uh, Google Fiber router, uh, Google Fiber like Wi-Fi router. And it does have some, what, limited settings, and also it has, like, a control page that you're beholden to Google to use, which is not the best, but it's really fast internet. That part's good. Um, so I was looking at the difference. So control S for saving, control R for replacing, and those are actually the only two differences as of right now with those two files. Uh, so let's go back. Where was that static? Nope, docs uh, static here. I do actually have control I. Does that one work? Control I, I suspect we probably whoa, would not want to ultimately use. This is doing that though, actually. Info docs. Maybe we didn't get that one to work. Not sure. Control E for settings menu. That one works. Prevented this from opening a pop up. Oh, uh, maybe Control I, maybe it didn't work because I didn't have anything selected. Yeah, I don't know. Or was I in here? That's what it was. I was in the address bar and I did Control I, and it took me to like certificate stuff. In the code, though, I have it set up where you can um, highlight something and then control I, and it opens this. I don't know if we'll end up using that or not, but I thought it was a fun touch. I was basically just playing around with this uh, ace editor to see what kinds of things it could do. So let's see if we can add back the save. I do think control S is a nice touch. Mostly because I instinctually use it to save. Add command. I have add commands. I wonder if I should be using a list of these things in here. Well, you don't need to keep that, I guess. 
this. Doesn't seem quite right. Yes, it is. Hmm. Why are formatting? There we go. That looks better. Right, add one. Let's try like this. I don't want to change too much and then like realize that this doesn't actually work. Let's do it. Let's try it and then if it does work, I'll add more to the list for control S, control R potentially. Let me catch up here. Some systems block MDNS. Only lost you for one second. Didn't even have to reload. No P. Nice. Should work if Apple stuff, because uh, I used to do it. You see S Patrick W. I just need a plug reading the boards. Reading the boards files and then send them instead of making the zip. How to host. Did you see this? I guess is the link in the Neerdoc bundler, which is super cool. Pick up auto button on the top. Ooh, yes. Circa auto button on the page will be amazing. That, that will be amazing. Did I make the build? One second, does it tell me? It doesn't tell me when it ran. I guess I did. Copy it. Yeah auto button that's gonna be that's gonna be super cool here we are mounted so we will eject Control I still works. Control E still works. We can take save, copy. And another one for R. So last time I tried this, got to a point where it would basically no longer, oops. It was almost like it wasn't returning the full page, basically. It returned part of the page, but then it just seemed like it wasn't doing anything else anymore. Um, didn't end up loading the content, if I recall correctly, which starts after all this stuff is declared. It felt like I ran over the amount of stuff I could send in one chunk or something. I don't actually know the technology behind it, and I suspect that it's because it felt like that. Like, that probably doesn't actually make sense with the technology, but it's what it felt like, so it'll be... Interesting to see now that we've added them back because basically all I did is I just cut out some of the code to make the total amount of code smaller and That seemed to get it working back then But uh, quite a bit has changed since then with all of the refactoring and stuff we Didn't have the reply static and all that yet. So it's possible that just something else changed or something else will have changed the behavior. I wonder if I uh, should not have Tried to load that yet? Maybe we're. Oh, I see. Yeah, here. This is where somehow it has just suddenly decided that we are definitely trying to use HTTPS, even though this whole time we haven't been. Super weird. Okay, so we go eject. Well, you could load, I guess. I could click this, and it will load successfully. But if I try to change it, then it will fail with 40. It was 409. That's what I guessed earlier. 409. That's the error for thing is already mounted. We need to do this. Then we could save.
what's the cause for using the bundler? To make it easy to install your libraries. One button, easy button click to install all the libraries that you need for a particular project. Yeah. Super cool. Uh, to, Tim, I have trouble reading the text of what you're showing in the stream. Uh, the the chat, uh, not the larger text that you're showing now. You mean the chat, like the uh, Discord and the YouTube? Um, possibly because I have the, maybe the transparency. Is it because the transparency is a little bit too aggressive on them? Or is it a size thing? Is it like the font's too small? Let me know one of those two. I can... Uh, I don't want to necessarily mess with too much of my OBS settings while I have it running, but if it's the transparency, I'll tweak that a bit uh, before the next stream. If it's the size, I'll try to zoom it in a bit. Um, and then if it's this text, which also does look pretty small, I guess I could zoom this in too. That's just like browser zoom. Um, probably could have CSS do it as well. So we were going to test our replace though. So if we wanted to say... I don't know, is there, there's really not much in this code that would make a whole lot of sense to replace, but yeah. Nice. Has undo history as well, so control Z undoes those, control Y puts it back. We'll make undo redo buttons eventually. Hello, deep dive different. So if I go control S, saving, boom. Yeah, it seems like now we are getting the whole file. I'm able to add more to it, and I have not hit the same issue now again. So seems like we're good here. Did I have any other things? I think these are the main ones I did. I'd have to go back and look at the history inside of that other file. See if there was anything else that I ended up changing. I don't think so. I can't remember. We have Geo still running and we got the new one. Oh, does it restart now? I think last time I used this, it didn't restart and I assumed that it just didn't yet. Maybe it looks like it does. Yeah, it does restart now, nice. Honestly though, I do like the way Arduino has a library manager, but that's for the entire PC, not the per project. CircuitPython would need something much more specific. Issue is getting the zip from GitHub and JavaScript blocked by cores. So I use server side proxy script on my own site. We could have it host the latest zips on cp.org. Yeah. Having script access. How's it going, uh, Dr. Zigzag on the YouTube there? up is pip for circuit python yeah that's the way i always explain it or npm if people are, are in, not np is it yeah npm uh it's the node package manager one for javascript libraries um so let's i don't know i probably won't go for too much longer we are at about two hours i got kind of back to where we were Let's do add something new though. I think let's keep seeing if we can add more stuff. I think undo redo would be a good couple of things to add maybe. Button ID undo button undo. We could there could be arrows eventually, you know the international symbols for undo redo. I don't know if those are international or not. For now I'm just gonna put them as text. Redo. Redo, and I don't actually, oops, hopefully that didn't 
We need circuit up t-shirts. Heck yeah, I'd wear a circuit up t-shirt. And it can update uh, update libraries as well, which is pretty nice, yeah. Um, I don't actually know. I guess there probably will just be undo function on uh, editor, probably, right? Editor dot redo. Seems like a good guess, at least. Right. Oh, but this is now right. I should have done this in here. Line bug. Of course, I also don't have the buttons now either. Nah. Never heard of Circuit before. Found the guide. We'll be doing some reading. Yeah, it's it's really really helpful. Like if you're used to pip or npm, um, and you want to play with Circuit Python stuff, like Circuit will come very naturally if you do have that experience with pip or npm and it's much much like quicker and more convenient for installing libraries if you're familiar with terminal if you're not familiar with terminal like it could be overwhelming and i do grant that for sure but if you are familiar with terminal you could do stuff way faster with circup than you can by like actually downloading the bundle unzipping it finding the files inside of it copy pasting them Get to bootloader here, copy that. I don't, does Circup have like a logo or anything? I don't know if Circup has like any imagery associated with it. I mean, obviously, like Blinka, a dime right here. Look at that. Okay. So we'll eject it. Save it. I feel like I'm playing Bop It. Eject it. Do, 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 do. Save it. Do. Edit. Do. Do. Alright. Somebody should make a Circuit Python Bop It game. That'd be pretty fun. Only thing I've used, uh, only thing I've used Python for was trying to erase Flash and install a bin. This build completes. The Wemos C3 board will be ready to merge. Nice. C3, we must C3. No circup logo. That's what we got to get on. All in. What is a we must C3? Oh, interesting. What an interesting shape. I don't think I've seen this before. Is it like cutie pie sized? I don't have a sense of scale. I guess these are breadboard probably, right? It's bigger than a cutie pie. It's like a wide itsy bitsy with a corner cutout kind of form factor-ish. Five dollars, whew. That sounds pretty good then. It has Bluetooth and Wi-Fi? Dang, yeah. C32, C3. I guess that Pico W will have some have some competition then. I figured that would be the cheapest one when it came out, but I haven't looked into this one at all though. Three mini. Could use the GitHub profile, which is the orangutan. Yeah, I think is it uh, Intel? I think has the orangutan on there. Uh, okay, so we did a change. We saved it. We saw that our change took effect. It printed the new stuff. So if I just do an undo right now, nice. Back, yeah, there you go. 
and do redo. It has a longer history too, I think, but in this case there was no... The, the rest of the history was when it first loaded, so undo past that just took everything away. But that gives us the whole uh, history stack. You know, eventually maybe we could draw a list of the history or whatever. You could actually visually look through it instead of just like clicking through it this way. Might be kind of cool. I don't know if it's necessary, but it'd be kind of cool. The most is popular in Arduino land. I bet, I mean, like a $5 Wi Fi thing, that's definitely, I could see it being popular for sure, because that's like, you make a lot of neat stuff with a, uh, a Wi Fi microcontroller, and at five bucks, like, you can afford to just make kind of like one off things and have it chirp data back somewhere or whatever, right? It's like super, super cheap. Uh, it's a Python and orangutan and Jungle Books reference, then. Uh, kind of funny. I don't think so. I'm not sure, though. I mean, the Python is just because of Python, um, Python programming language, and then I don't know where they... I think they chose it partially because of Monty Python, not as much because of actual Python, the lizard, or snakes, lizards? I don't know. Not because of the animal, but because of Monty Python. And then CircuitPython, of course, just took the same name, and so that's kind of why Blinka is a snake, I assume. But then Intel... I don't know about the orangutan. My guess is just that Intel likes orangutans. Talking about the circuit buffer author. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'd, I don't, I've never had a chance to... I don't think I've ever been in the same place with uh, Nathan. I think that's Intel's name, Nathan. Um, I've never had a chance to talk to him or anything, but I I have heard a couple of, like, um, inter, inter... Did I... I hear it or read it. I think I read it. It was like a more long form interview that's written that was with him, if I'm recalling correctly. I don't think logo or uh, GitHub profile was discussed though in the thing I saw. It was it was a lot about um, the micro bit. I think. Hopefully, I'm not confusing the person. I think Intel also was one of the ones that worked on that. So hopefully, I'm not wrong, but. There are many contributors. The original author doesn't participate. Yeah, not uh, not actively as much. I don't think until he does uh, Mu as well though. In Mu, I think gets more like maintenance attention from uh, from Nathan at this point. Essentially, Circup kind of moved into Adafruit land a bit. Um, what else could we try to add to this? Could always certainly we could always make the buttons fancier. Also, the status could certainly be made fancier, like a little green dot, or a red dot, or a yellow dot, or something. Or maybe an asterisk for unchanged would probably be a good idea. Maybe it should say the name of the file at the top of the page. It's an idea. An image probably doesn't mean anything. Path file would make sense. Is a web server available while user code is running? I believe so, because I think my user code is running now. It just doesn't do anything. Uh, well, we can look in code by here. Or, oh, well, it does do things. Actually, it has this touch thing. Yeah, we can test it. Um, touch? Yeah, I'm able to touch those and they come through and we're still live editing here as well, so my print changed again, save. This resets, prints its thing. And now I can still touch. Can we get that? So yeah, you can run the, the web server like runs in the background back there basically. Yeah, it's super cool. Definitely agreed. Could run it in a different port. Yeah, if you needed like yeah, especially if you wanted to also make Python code that did a web server as well, you could use different port. I think you can disable this as well, right? Like I have, um, I'm not going to open it. I'm not going to open it. Not going to open it. But the thing that I'm not going to open is, whoops. Whoops. File browser. I have 
this file right here, which I'm not going to open, called .env. I'm pretty sure if you don't have this file or if you don't have the credentials that go inside of it, then I think it won't start the web workflow. That's my understanding. So then if you wanted to use port 80 for whatever you want to do, you could just not have this .env file and then web workflow would not start up. You'd be free to use port 80 for whatever you want. I can open it. Back to here. So if it were me, I probably would default this to a dark one. I tend to be more of a dark color. That's kind of just user preference though, and really you can change it with this thing. Although maybe we don't really want all of these settings. This is basically like a, I think they call this the kitchen sink example. It has like every setting that this module supports, uh, which we don't necessarily need all of them by any means. Make it read only, interesting. Oh, that's interesting. So it could maybe know if it's in read only mode. Like the same way that USB warning on the previous page shows, this could use that same logic and put this into read-only mode so it wouldn't even allow you to write into it. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, not gonna open it. You gotta be careful sometimes. You start streaming, you just go on autopilot, you're like, yeah, let me just open this and show you the, oh, whoops, I just gotta go change my Wi-Fi password now. It's not what you want. Boom, wow, that's big. That's folding, fold the main loop here. Be nice. Open secret spy on stream. Yeah, I've done it before, trust me. <laughs> That's why I'm uh, I'm a little more diligent about it now, and I still sometimes I'm sure I will mess it up at uh, at some point again. I'm sure, but okay. Uh, I'm pretty happy with where we got. This has like it's it almost has like texture in the background on this one. It's like staticky back there. It's kind of interesting. Um, we got it back to where we were. We got undo and redo. We're using the whole new newest version of the code. Like everything's been refactored to the static stuff, which is super cool. We don't have to build the uh, minimized file. I mean, I guess we could minify it. It would take up less space, but I don't know that it matters necessarily if we're not trying to paste it into one line. Um, I guess that, that generator script, I guess, probably minifies it essentially anyway, whatever it does when you run the make. Um, yeah, so I will... I think there's probably still some cleanup on my end before it's ready to like PR it and start getting feedback. Like I, th I assume we would want, well, I mean, I'm sure we don't want edit on things that are not ed editable, like doesn't need to be on this one. Probably doesn't need to be on any directory. I don't even know what it will do, 404, I guess. Um, so we should have some check for that. Probably this should be an icon like the trash can if it's gonna be there. So there's a couple things to, to tweak about it that I want to do, I think, before I make it to a PR. But we are well on our way. Adding the path as well at the top, kind of like how this is here. If I click in like it says here, I think we should have definitely something like that as well. Can we open this? No, that got us a 404. Oh, but that's because it doesn't have slash lib, actually. I bet this would work if we had lib. No. Actually, I don't think it reloads, though, when you change this. Yeah, see, now it, because, yeah, it doesn't re- I'll, I should probably, I should try to figure that part out, too. I think that's a JavaScript thing. When we change this hash, it's not actually reloading the page if you just type in it up here. Um, in this case, though, the links, the links are wrong. From the lib page, it should have the directory in it, so I'll have to work that out, too. But on the right road, removing secrets pie from the public repo, forgetting it's in the history. Yeah. Oh, good. 
Great about that, now that I'm posting stuff to my own GitHub. Yeah, if you use uh, environment variables, it's pretty good. You can just make, you know, git ignore for your environment file, and then in your code, you just have the OS dot environment var or whatever, and it makes it so your actual stuff is stays in your own little environment there. Um, all right, thank you everybody for watching and hanging out. Um, C Grover, DJ Devin, Ask Patrick W. Thank you again. Huge thanks to Scott. Got me unstuck there. Um, I would not have made it through the rest of the stuff without Scott's help. Obviously, for building all of this stuff initially, but also more acutely uh, this evening to be able to actually get this working. Thank you uh, for sure. Huge thanks to Scott. And let's see. Sounds like it could be an on-off button for inv. Oh, I'm. Uh, let's see here. I was actually scrolled back. This is great stuff. Uh, thanks for the stream. Very enjoyable. Yeah, nice. Thanks for uh, thanks for hanging out. Uh, everybody else that was around, Paul over on YouTube, uh, Taki707, Charles, Rick. Uh, let's see, who else? We had Beata over there. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, Lego Man just dropped a uh, emoji on us there. Thanks for hanging out for a bit, Lego Man. And let's see, we had Dexter around in this one. Ask Patrick, DJ Devin. Naradoc, thank you for your help. Scott, I got most people. David was around for a bit. Did David leave? Deshipu left at one point, but thank you to David and Deshipu. Hanging out, watching all of that stuff. I think we got I think we got everybody. So I uh, hope everybody has a good night. Uh good weekend. It is a 4th of July weekend here in the US, so Monday is a holiday. Uh which means that the meeting is not until Tuesday. Um, yeah, so I'll probably be back on, I don't know, probably next Friday for sure, but maybe sometime in between. Um, tomorrow for my stream on my Twitch, if you want to follow me over there, Foamy Guy Twitch, you can get notified for that. I'll be back in the morning tomorrow, 10 a.m. Central Time. Probably we'll be going back to the game, the Python, uh, the uh, Game & Watch Octopus thing is probably what we'll be doing tomorrow. So if folks are interested in games and sprites and stuff like that, come hang out then. Uh, for everybody else, thanks again, have a good night, and I'll see you all later.